direct from Liverpool, the home of the 2023 Eurovision Song Contest, this is Pete from Eurobersi. Let's talk about the Swiss entry. See, that's the nice thing about having kids, is you've always got a prop for every occasion, even if it is the most literal prop. Um, that took three takes, by the way, so there was currently just a wet puddle in my carpet over there, so um, that's going to go down well. Right, on to Eurovision. Let's talk about the Swiss entry. The Swiss entry this year is going to be sung by a young man called uh, Remo Farah, and the song is called Watergun. Now, Switzerland in recent years um, have sent some really good songs, and they came close a couple of years back um, in terms of the jury vote. Um I really liked Boys Don't Cry by Marius Bear last year. I thought it was a great song, um, but I'm lame, so what do we know? Switzerland, last time they won it was in 1988, uh, where they robbed Scott Fitzgerald uh, by one point, and they've only ever won the contest twice, uh, the first time and uh, in the late 80s. Um, I'm going to listen to the song now. Um, I've not really heard it. I've managed to avoid it so far. I'm going to have a listen to it. I've, I've read some comments on Twitter about it, and we'll come to what those comments were in a little bit. Uh, but I'm going to listen to it, and then we'll come back and talk about it. As always, um, I'm not going to. You're not going to see me react live because copyright, and I've got a really boring face, so it would be very much fun. So this is the Swiss entry, Remo Farah with Watergun. Right. Um, so as always, I I write lots of things down. I'm, I'm going to show you two of my sort of initial thoughts from this. Um, my first was uh, my first worry was that um, that this was, if you can read that, is was like a. I listened to the first chorus, uh, first chorus, uh, the first verse. Sorry, and um, proper people would edit that. Never mind. Um, I listened to that first verse of, of lyrics and it sort of hit me as a sort of David Brent from The Office is trying to do a song about war and, and, and the futility of it and why people die and things. Um, but it is a bit nicer than that. We'll, we'll come back to that in a second. I was I was really worried that this was going to be a sort of David Brent-esque, go get the guitar um, episode, uh, song, sorry. Um but it wasn't. And then the other thing that struck me, the other thing I sort of wrote down in, in big letters was uh, was this. Um, there's parts of the chorus that really remind me of um, Imagine by John Lennon. And I can't quite describe it because they don't sound the same, but there's, there's piano bits in it. There's a, there's a sort of chord change that reminds me a little bit of Imagine. Um, the sort of, and the world will, the bit where John Lennon sings and um, I hope one day you'll join us and the world will live as one. There's a sort of chord change there that's very similar. Um, I'm not saying they're the same song. They're absolutely not. Um, let's go through the song. I like the... We've got a lot of songs this year, such as May Muller, such as Israel, such as um, Norway, with these big wow, sort of, and France as well. Uh, these big, And actually what you've got here is a very nice, gentle, just... Piano, dum 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 dum, type type feel, um, and in a way, I suppose if if you really wanted to um, create a metaphor for war, um, there is that peaceful beginning, and then it builds towards something uh, bigger, and then it ends in the same way that it ended, hopefully with peace. I don't know. Maybe that's a metaphor that I've read in too far too much. I don't know. But I think I do like the way how it starts very gently, and I like the way how it ends in exactly the same way. It's sort of it's almost like a is that a circle? It's like a you 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 end up back where you started in terms of the music, and I quite like that. Um, the second verse. What we've had a lot this year is where the second verse sounds very different to the first verse um, with a lot of the songs. And usually that's been achieved by just adding a bass drum over and over. Uh, they haven't done that here. Um, the, the the backing drums in the second verse are actually quite nice and quite unusual sounding. Um, and you do the occasional that sort of brass wham sound um, that for some reason reminds me of The Apprentice. But it's a, I think that I think musically it's a nice song. Um, doesn't quite move me doesn't sort of doesn't give me the sort of you know you, you want a song of this nature to sort of make you feel a bit moved by what's what's being thrown at you again I, I said this about Italy yesterday I don't know if just 
the strings in the track need to be a bit stronger. I don't know anything about mixing or producing, so I'm, you know, this is just me riffing. I say this, every video I say there's one thing I don't know about, and then this is it. Let's talk about uh, Remo. Great voice, um, that end note um, in the final chorus that he holds on, on the recording sounds absolutely excellent. I hope he pulls it off on the night because that will sound great. He's, he's got a lovely voice. I was trying to think who is the way he says, soldier, soldier. He says it in a way that reminds me, it'll come to me after I've stopped recording, but it, it reminds me of some, but um, maybe David Greta, hey brother. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Um, but he's got he's got a nice voice, um, and I hope when the backing vocals kick in in the second and third, or the second the second half of the song, I hope they're real. I hope the actual backing singers on stage um, for this song, um, because I think that will, will sound a lot nicer than just sort of. But we you know the audience won't know. But it'd be nice to have real backing singers really giving it the raw. Um, let's talk about the theme. Because this has been a slightly not controversial, maybe it is, but the, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who've pointed out a neutral country doing a song about war and saying, "I don't want to be a soldier," when there are actual soldiers across Eastern Europe at the moment in a in a war, it may seem a little bit jarring. And I can see what they're trying to do. This is, you know, this is to acknowledge that there is a war going on in Europe at the moment. And obviously the, the contest that's a move from Ukraine to, to Liverpool as a result of, of that war. And I think this is a, an attempt to acknowledge that. And Eurovision's done this in the past. You know, there was, in 1990, there were so many songs relating to peace and European unity and then literal walls falling down. So th there's nothing quite, there's nothing really bad about somebody wanting to do a song that acknowledges that there is currently a, a geopolitical situation. <sighs> It's whether, number one, is, is neutral Switzerland the right people to do it, particularly when the Czech Republic have already done a song that's sort of, again, I don't want to get into the politics of the Czech Republic entry, uh, Czechia, I beg your pardon, the Czechia entry uh, too much because I just don't know enough about it. But um, when there's a war going on, there are actual people dying in that war. To have a song where people are saying, well, I don't want to be a soldier, um, is actually perhaps a problematic lyric. Maybe it's more to acknowledge people are fighting because what's at stake is Ukraine. What's at stake is Russia invading uh, Ukraine. And actually using a lyric such as, well, I don't want to be a soldier. There are people fighting over in the Ukraine who were not in the army, who were volunteered. There are people who've come from outside of um, Ukraine, rightly or wrongly, to help with that war effort. So perhaps maybe saying, I don't want to be a soldier when actual people are being soldiers right now um, is perhaps a bit jarring. I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of thinking out loud as to why people might find this song jarring. I don't really have too much of an opinion on it, um, but I can see why it's, it's wrangled a lot of people. On the one hand, as I say, it's good to acknowledge there is a war going on. People are dying. There is blood. There is body bags. Let's acknowledge that. But doing it in a sort of song such as this may not be the right way to have done it. I don't know. I'd, and, and I'd love for people to comment and then say what they think about it in a nice way that doesn't shout at me and tell me what how, how wrong I am. Because I don't know if I am right or wrong. I'm just sort of thinking about the various things. Um, sorry, we've had a cut there uh, so that I can check which semi-final this is in. I should always check. I never do. I'm terrible. Um, 94 subscribers, can't be wrong. Um, so Switzerland are going to appear in semi-final one. Um, 15 songs, five will not qualify. Um, it's it, it's going to be a tough one. I can't call it on this one. I can't I can't say whether it will or won't. This is a televote only uh, decision uh, in the semi-final. On the one hand, you've got a song about war at a time when Europe is at war, and maybe phone voters will pick up on that. On the other hand. Voters may say, do you know what, we just want some fun and we just want Malta <laughs> and Norway um, and we want a joyous night and maybe a song about war and soldiers and body bags is not quite what we want. I don't know. I genuinely can't call this one. Um, I think if it did get to the semi uh, into the final, 
again, I think a lot of the jury votes would hinge on his voice, which is excellent. But again, how problematic is the theme given what's going on? I don't know. Um, so there we are. That's my view of Switzerland. Um, I used to give these so the, the songs like a score out of 10, but there's absolutely no point um, because I always go for anywhere between seven and a half to eight and a half, um, except for the UK, which is, of course, 11. Um, but yeah, what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, if you do, if you have a view on it, then comment uh, on this video and don't forget to like, share and subscribe uh, to Eurobercy where I bring you opinion and commentary direct from Liverpool, the home of the 2023 Eurovision Song Contest. I've been Pete. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.